Welcome back, fellow adventurers. This week, we head down south, the coast of Rhodes, and explore the ancient fortified castle and the gorgeous Greek village of Lindos. We have challenging weather forecasts and we are faced with changing weather and have to make a run for an exposed anchorage before we make the crossing to Crete. But there's nowhere to hide. Come along and see how we cope with the changing conditions. We are John and Ali, the Barefoot Doctors, sailing and travelling around the globe. Join us as we share the adventure and explore the beauty of the world. Because life is better barefoot. Well, good morning, fellow adventurers. Today is Drop the Line Day. So, we're here in Greece, in Rhodes, and we're getting ready to push off. But we've got a couple of things to do before we go, and um, I'm just trying to hurry this guy up, because, you know, can't get good help these days. <laughs> so the water tanks are filled. I'm putting away the electric, I've already put away the electric power cord and now that we filled up the tanks I'm putting away the water hose, water pipe. I he called said, it, <laughs> I called it a water pipe. He said, what do we, where do we put the water pipe again? I went, what, you mean the hose? He went, yeah. <laughs> Look at my hair, I forgot to brush my hair yet. Anyway, I'm ready to go. Thank you very much for all your help, Yannis. We are waiting for you always, okay? We are friends, we are okay. So we don't forget the boat. Okay, guys, we'll pull in the fenders and tidy the ropes. have just dropped the lines and left Rhodes Marina, New Marina, one of our favorite marinas. Um, and we're heading to Crete as our destination. But we're gonna stop off, we're gonna take a few days to head to Crete. So there's a few stops along the way and a few um, dodgy weather windows that we've gotta make sure that we don't run into the rough weather. So we've gotta hide behind some of the islands on the way. But this is pretty exciting. We're on our way to Crete and we really like you guys to come with us on the adventure. Captain's at the helm, motoring out of the marina and we've got about, only about 10 knots of wind, but that's okay for now. We'll go sailing in a minute. We've only just left the marina, which is back there, the first point of land there's a head there a few miles away, but I'm already so hot I've had to change into my shorts. So that's a good sign. There's a tanker ahead and it's anchored, so John's just going to find out um, if we should be going inside or outside of the tanker. We, uh, we weren't going to hit it, but it was going to be fairly close. So I just veered five degrees to port and now we'll clear it on this side. There are some sandbanks inshore, but, um, but we would have had space either side of that boat. So it's no big deal. So let's put up the Genoa. He's excited. So we're just winching the Genoa up because the ropes are a bit stiff. When I'm hoisting the Genoa, I don't attach the bottom shackle until the sail's all the way up. If you attach the bottom shackle at the beginning, what you get is sail sort of crumples up on itself. It's much harder to hoist. As long as you've not got a lot of wind, just leave the bottom open and then attach it when it's all up. Then it's easy like that. You do not want to drop the shackle. Same process going in. A bit of Loctite on that is a good idea. And this is something you take every day when you're on an ocean crossing to make sure that shackle's not coming out. We can now create, put a bit of tension on the halyard to get a little bit of tension on the uh, luff of the sail. So give it a hit. Another one. So when you look at the sail, it should be straight. There should be no crinkles. Sometimes a little bit of tension is good, but not too much. And, and you can just feel a bit of tension in there. 
bad one. That's, that's plenty. Now you need to lock off the halyard cleat up there, please. Locked up. Thank you. Smoko time on the front cockpit. Isn't this a beautiful space? Look at this. So finally we have got the engines off as we're doing this sail to Lindos. The wind was very calm, you know, five knots and under. And now it's come up to 10 knots. So we're sailing along and it's hard on the wind actually, or fairly hard on the wind. Lindos is just over there. It is always so nice to get the engines off and just hear the wall the sound of the water running past the hulls and the wind in this sail. Look at that. Lovely. 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 The remnants of our morning tea. The town is on this side and the castle's up here. So quite a protected bay. 12 knots of wind speed. Speed over the ground 4.6 knots. Depth too deep to measure. Even though we're very close, the wind's a bit cold. Which is why I've got my jacket on. into this bay called Lindos and it's a lovely little town here. So as we're coming in we're going to check the depth and check on the screen to see if there's any bombies or any shallow uh, rocky crops. Doesn't look like there's many boats in here, there's one. But it is early in the season. John's tying down the boom. We've just dropped the sails, but there's a quite an amazing castle on the hill here. Okay. I'll get, we'll get it to dig in. Then when the boat swings around to windward where we drop the anchor. You can see the anchor chain down there. It's good to line the boat up with something that's stationary to see if it's moving or not. The chain's still greasy from the winter protection. Mm. It looks like it. So we just came through here, anchored, and this is Lindos.
and not so many ticks, but we need a lot of data. And that's also we can send out the videos to you guys. So make sure you like, subscribe, and ding the bell because that's why we're paying 1,480 lira for you guys. <laughs> Come on, you gotta subscribe. <laughs>So guys, this is why we don't have a dinghy with the centre console because when you want to pull the boat up on the beach and it's just the two of you, you need to be able to do it and we can only just do it. Especially if the beach is on a slope. Yeah. Uh, this is really the, the weight we can manage without getting a third person. Ready? One, two, two. three. Oh, one, two, three. Ugh. I've got the dead man. Oh, you've got the dead I man. I collected the dead man, yep. You put it in the bag or? Yep. It's in the zipper section. Shh, don't tell anyone where it is. <laughs> okay guys, so what are we doing? Coming up. Nestled on the eastern coast of Rhodes in Greece, Lindos is a captivating village that melds ancient history with modern charm. The village crowned by the majestic Acropolis of Lindos boasts a rich history dating back to the 10th century BC, serving as a significant maritime power in ancient Greece. Its natural harbour, once bustling with merchant ships, was a key maritime hub in the Aegean Sea, facilitating trade and cultural exchanges. The labyrinth streets flanked by whitewashed houses adorned with vibrant bougainvillea tells tales of numerous battles, including sieges by the Persians and later by the Ottoman Empire. Today, Lindos is a thriving destination where past and present harmoniously coexist. Modern sailors find its pristine beaches and crystal clear waters of its sheltered bay irresistible. Sailors of integrity were drawn to Lindos for its strategic locations, safe anchorage and the revered temple of Athena, Lindia, where they sought blessings for their safe voyages. Honey, tell us about the history. Well, the Acropolis here was built at the highest point on the hill inside the castle for protection. It was built about 400 years BC by the Greeks, uh, dedicated to Athena, the goddess, and then... And in rightly so. <laughs> <laughs> and in subsequent years, the place was fortified more and more. Uh, the Greeks were invaded by the uh, Byzantines, and then and the, the Ottomans, and then the Greeks took back control in about the 16th century. It's true nature. As soon as we got up here, John said, there's no wind. <laughs> it's flat calm today, which is lovely for the hike up here, but not good for sailing. And you can see from the view up here, they'd have really good ideas of uh, ships coming to invade. So this was the main port for many centuries until uh, roads at the top end of the island took over. Mm, so that's very impressive. Yeah. In ancient times, sailors who sought the favour of Athena for a safe passage would offer various gifts of sacrifice to her temples. And of course, no fortress would be complete without some olive trees. <laughs> They're sprinkled everywhere. So it's now midday and this is the line. Sneaking all the way back. If you visit here, you can explore historical ruins like the ancient shipyards or enjoy lively taverns and vibrant shops. 
as during the summer months in Lindos, it's transformed into a vibrant hub of activity, with its picturesque streets brimming with seasonal restaurants and boutiques. Many of these establishments open exclusively for the summer months, catering to the influx of tourists seeking the quintessential Greek experience. Boutique shops line the narrow cobblestone streets, offering a selection of artesian goods and handmade jewellery, textiles to locally craft pottery and art. Each summer, these shops and eateries provide a dynamic and ever-changing landscape, ensuring that every visit to Lindos is infused with new flavours and treasures. We made it past the ice cream shop. If she my needed little, a my seat. Little white, little white legs are tired. <laughs> <laughs> so Back home for a... I'm thinking maybe if we did. Oh, let's take a photo. We'll show you what we're, we're looking at. Hold on. When we get back to Expedition Bay for the Hurricane, it'll just be worth it. It's the ahead of us, we're out swimming at dawn. Ridiculous. Whooping and hollering. I thought they were for help, but <laughs> it's actually they're just getting into the cold We are really enjoying our time here in Lindos and somehow, sometime, we feel we will return. Perfect! <laughs> Isn't he clever? Back home at Expedition Bay. Having spent a lovely day in Lindos and up the castle, we have another look at the weather to see what lies ahead. Remembering that we planned our hops to make it easy day sails and also avoid the storms that come every three days, we have to keep an eye on what's actually happening. And as is often the case, the storm that was meant to come through after we got to Carpathos, it now seems like it's coming through a day earlier, so will present us with 36 knot winds on the crossing, which clearly is not what we want to do. The even bigger concern is a very strong westerly that's coming through four days later, and that is due to be reaching 45 knots. So at this point, we have to change our plan to weather this northerly storm at the bottom of roads and then cross over to Carpathos and run real fast to get into Sitia or some other protected anchorage in Crete to be safe for this 45 knot storm. We are only two or three days into the trip and already the weather forecasts are changing significantly and this is really the reality of life on a boat. So as we set off for the bottom of roads we know we are going to be out in the open without any harbours to hide in but this is preferable to being caught out in the 45 knot storm later on in an exposed anchorage. So that's the best plan we can make for now and we just have to see if we can find a good anchorage at the south of Rhodes to sit out the first storm and then make the crossing over to Crete to hide from the bigger blow later on. Keep your fingers crossed for us guys because this is really a lot more exciting times than we were aiming to have. Well good morning guys, we have just left Lindos which is in Greece, the little anchorage we were in for a couple of nights and it was absolutely beautiful flat calm which is what you love in an anchorage. But today the captain is whinging because there is no wind. <laughs> and it's black calm again but as soon as we get out and motor for a couple of hours the wind will pick up and uh, we should be able to put the sails up and do some sailing the prediction is that <laughs> the wind will pick up <laughs> fingers crossed <laughs> anyway this is the morning it's absolutely beautiful even though it is flat calm as you can see it's wonderful to be able to see where you're going when you're on a boat and that's where these big windows and the front cockpit really come into play and great view in the stern as well
Here we are at the bottom end of the road. We're going to get in behind one of these little bays and anchor there for the night. So here is our track coming into the bottom end of roads and we dropped anchor here. We stayed there for the night, but there was very low hills in front of us, so we're getting quite strong winds. And we referred to Rod Heichel's Greek Waters pilot. And apparently this bay further up had higher mountains and better protection. So we motored around there the next morning because the blow was going to get stronger that night. And this would be even more uncomfortable the following day. So up we went around the corner. It was only a mile. We stayed there the night and just sat it out. But we did make very good use of our time by editing videos, changing the filters on the water maker. And of course, this is when having a great relationship with your partner is a huge benefit because we do really enjoy each other's company. Good morning, everybody. And we are here to uh, show you a new tools that we have just got from Austria, from the factory of the, our welding machine, uh, Fronius. This tool uh, is very important for us uh, and is really, really important for uh, boat builders. This is, the, this is the neck of the welding torch. The particular feature of this uh, neck, uh, then I can do this. So if I need to welding uh, underneath, I can go there and I can welding uh, in any position because I, I'm, I will adjust the welding according with the, where I have to weld. It's not a simple tool so because inside here we have uh, a lot of things. We have, of course, the filler, the aluminium filler. We have the water because it's water cooled and we have the gas. So all the combination of this make this tool uh, something uh, a bit sophisticated. Uh, only Franius from Austria, they do this kind of very liable and sophisticated tools. As you see, manufacture is uh, particular with the holes for the gas. Uh, we have argon gas uh, to avoid the explosion of the oxygen uh, when you're going to welding. The sparks then goes on the aluminium, they damage the aluminium and they can create some porosity. That is the reason why we have the argon gas to work, work in a controlled atmosphere without oxygen. So you have the melting, but not the combustion. And according with where I need to weld in, I can bend even like this. So there's no torch in the market that can do 90 degree in this way. This can do it. And it's water cooled, that is very important. So it means that I can weld in continually. It's never warm and never overheat. So that, that is the difference of Fronius. It is one of the most expensive machines, unfortunately, but this one is the best. Thanks for joining us on this journey and don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to be a part of an exciting way to save lives around the world, join our Patreon family and get up close and personal with us.